Hello, I'm the 10 Minute English teacher. Let's get you exam ready. Today we are thinking about GCSE English language. We're going to be doing a walking, talking mock for creative writing. All you need is paper and a pen. And by the end of our time together, you will have written a fantastic short story full of some really great descriptions. Writing to describe. Today we're going to be really descriptive and I'm going to be taking you through each paragraph step by step. So you'll build a fantastic story that will be revealed to you throughout the session. But the first thing we need to do is think about what we need to do to be descriptive. On the left hand side there you've got the senses. So we should be thinking about what our character can see, hear, smell, maybe taste, but that's possibly something that um, we don't always need to use. And we've got feel and feel there. There are two types of feelings for us to be thinking about. The feeling of cold wind, physical feeling in that sense, but we've also got emotions as well and how our character feels. If we're including this sort of um, imagery in our writing, it's going to be really engaging for the reader. The other thing that we can do is we can write about big or obvious things, which everyone does because they're obvious. But also, once we've done that, layer our descriptions with some smaller or less obvious details. Going from big to small is a really great way of improving your descriptions and making them really rich. Let's just think about doing that together now. Here's a cloud and ultimately if you're in the exam there's a chance of you writing about being outside so clouds are something that you might mention and if you're inside there might be a window and you can write about clouds. Clouds are never fluffy. It is a terrible cliched, it's not ambitious, nonsense thing to do don't do it um it's a really easy way to say i'm not that good so don't ever say clouds are fluffy it's um it's just not that great so don't do it clouds can be a million other things but not fluffy don't don't ever think that that's okay it's not right so let's think about what these clouds could be they could be angry so i've used a bit of personification there so i've said this is about four five six i mean you could have that sentence in a piece of work that gets full marks but you know as a sort of indication of the sort of style and level that we're writing at this would be that sort of four five six sort of um response and 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 style so we've got angry clouds filled the sky not a bad description i'm going to take that a bit further and show you what i'd be looking for um for seven eight nine top band sort of stuff here's an example of that by this point in the late afternoon ominous clouds had covered the weak november sun from view So in that sentence, I've got a time adverbial at the front that's telling my reader sort of where we are. We're in the late afternoon. I've sort of added another layer to that by talking about the November sun. And the clouds are ominous as if they're bringing some sort of, you know, worrying message um, with them. So that's a really sort of ambitious opening. Now, I've got big. Clouds are big, big and obvious. And it's obviously good to do that. Um, Now let's stick a bird in view. We've got a little bird in the sky as well. Let's have that a little bit less obvious. And here's a description that can um, suit that bird. A lone bird let out a chilling call as it flew overhead. So that's what we've got um, there to show the idea of going from big to small um, in our descriptions. So that's an idea that you can take with you today. Try and use the senses. Think about how your character thinks um, and, and let your reader get into their mindset and understand their frame of mind. Try and think about you know, the sounds in your settings as well as um, what you can see. Go from big to small with your visual descriptions, but then also get some of those other senses involved as well. Okay, today's question. So we're going to build this response now. You're going to hear the question and then we're going to, I'm going to walk you through those paragraphs. And this is what the question is. Write a story about someone who finds something strange. So that's what we're going for today. And we are now in that, the, you know, the first five minutes of that um, assessment. So let's think about what we need to do first. Planning. So the first thing you do in the first five minutes is you plan your response. Your English teachers are expecting to see that. And so is the examiner. They want to know that you've actually thought about the direction of your writing and given it a little bit of thought. So we've got five minutes at the beginning to really think about the direction that our story is going to take. And this is what we're going to do today. It's nice and simple. And if I was in the examination, this is what I'd do. I'd give myself five or six bullet points that just plot the action in my story. So I'm going to have someone walking a dog. They're going to see a house. They're going to go up to the house, have a little look in the window. They're going to go inside. My character's going to see something strange in there so that I'm meeting the needs of the question. And then at the end, a little bit of a cliffhanger. They're in this house and then someone arrives. Lovely. Now, that isn't the most ambitious and it isn't the most original, but it works. What, where I'm getting the marks from is by showing that I can do all those things that the examiner wants to know about. Paragraphing, punctuation, 
vivid descriptions and, um, and a clear, consistent direction throughout the piece of writing, which is what we're aiming for today. So that's the plan that we're going to use. I'm now going to take you through every section and give you time to write. So if you've got your paper in front of you, I will be giving you the time to build these sections of your writing. I'm aiming not to call them paragraphs because at this point you should be thinking, you know, I, I might want to use a one sentence paragraph for a bit of impact. So, you know, walking your dog, that could be three paragraphs. You know, that, that, there's no hard and fast rule to that. They're a stylistic choice. But if we see these as sections in our story, that's a, that's a good um, way to look at what we're about to do. Okay, part one today, this is what you're going to do. You're going to describe your character walking the dog along, walking their dog along a stranded coastline. So you can give your character a, a tiny bit of backstory and give them a name. You can explain what time of day it is, whatever you want to do there, but just set the scene. I'm only giving you five minutes for this. And I would keep this in the past tense, keep it firmly in the past. That's the easiest thing to do. So this is a story that has happened. So all your verbs need to be in the past tense. Everything that you write about has happened. Make sure that's the case. Don't go in and out of the past and present. That's, that's a headache. Um, so you do that. Include some of the senses. We've, we could have wind and you know, cold and we, you know, all that sort of stuff. The sound of the waves is, you know, on the beach. So we've got some rich imagery that we can use here in, with, to impress our readers. Go from big to small. If you want to have a cloud and a bird, lovely. I want you to use a semicolon here. And if we've done that early on, we don't need to necessarily do it lots throughout the piece of writing. The, the opening is a way of you saying to the examiner, look, I can use semicolon, so I know what I'm doing with punctuation. And if you use a one sentence paragraph for a little bit of impact, you're also telling your examiner, hello, I can use paragraphs really well. So that's what you're going to do now. And you've got five minutes to do that. You'll hear from me when your time is up.
Okay, well done. That is the time that you've had for part one over. We're going to move on to thinking about what's going to happen next in our story. Part two. The dog runs off into the distance towards a house, a lone house that stands next to an old rowing boat. So you're going to describe your dog running off towards that house and you're going to give your first impressions of it. <clears throat> Maybe it gives you an un- uneasy feeling looking at this house with this wreck of an old rowing boat next to it. And you look around, no one's about. You know, try, we, we're, we're writing a story that's, um, that's, that's meant to have a bit of tension and atmosphere. So try and build that in this section of your writing. You've got five minutes You'll hear from me when your time is up and I'll move you on. And um, best of luck, off you go.
Okay, you've had five minutes now on that section of writing. We're moving on to part three. Part three, your character approaches the house and sees that the front door is open. And your character looks through a window and sees some black and white photos on the wall. Maybe can't make them out from from, um, where your character is standing. And there's a grandfather clock standing by a wall. So that's what's going to happen here. See the front doors open. What might you going, be going through your character's mind? And your character looks through the window and, and we've got that description that you can do there. You've got five minutes to do this section of your work. You'll hear from me when the time is up.
Okay, you've had five minutes, we're moving on, and we're going to think about part four. In this section of your writing, this is what's going to happen. Your character's going to go into the house. It can be cold and dusty, and you can use the range of senses to load this section of your writing with imagery. And your character is going to see a portrait of an elderly couple that looks like it was taken many years ago. And have a look at that photo. You've got this old couple framed on the wall, standing together, and they look furious. That's going to make your character feel really distressed and unsettled. So explore that. You've got five minutes. You'll hear from me when your time is up.
Okay, part five. We're inside the house now, and this is where we're going to see something strange. Um, and you're going to see an old wooden dining table, your character is, in the corner of the room, and your character's going to find a photo album, really old, dusty, leather-bound photo album, maybe. And as your character opens it, the character's going to notice that every photo in the picture has the eyes of the people in them scratched away. So this is going to be a really distressing moment where your character's going to you know, be really, really um, unnerved by what he sees and unsettled and harrowed by all, all these really terrifying images in the photo album. And this is going to get, get that, that tension really built in this piece of writing. So you've got five minutes to build that moment and really craft it well. Uh, and you'll hear from me when the time is up.
Okay, part six. In this moment, your dog, uh, your character's dog, is going to cower and move away to the corner of the room, like softly whimpering. And at this moment, your character's going to want to leave. And at that instant, they hear the front door click shut and they realise that they're not alone in the house. And that's where we're going to end the story. This piece of writing will conclude there. You've got five minutes to wrap this up in a dramatic way. You'll hear from me when the time is up.
Okay, to finish on, you've got five minutes and they are important. This is the time that you're going to edit. And when we say, have you read your work back? What, what is, what's better to say is, have you had time to edit your writing? So we're going to do two things. The first one is check accuracy of spelling, punctuation and grammar. We all make mistakes um, and you'll find them in this time. So read your work back carefully and look for where you've made mistakes and lapses of accuracy. There will be a couple. Um, And then once you've done that, this is your opportunity to change some of your choices of vocabulary by striking a line through them and writing a more ambitious word choice above, not in the margin. So the examiner is expecting high level students to be doing this, to be editing their work at the end. Um, So do that, take that time. You might find a comma that could be a semicolon. That's the sort of thing you can also look for here. Do not write in the margin um, in, in an examination it won't be something that will be seen or viewed by your examiner. So don't waste any time doing that. Keep it firmly on the page. If you need extra paper to do anything, then ask your examiner. They'll be happy to support you. So you've got five minutes now to edit your work and you'll hear from me when the time is up.
Okay, you've had five minutes, and what you should have now in front of you is a really well-crafted piece of writing full of some interesting imagery and descriptions, and also a sort of model response that you might actually be able to use on the day of the exam. They give you very broad sort of um, scenarios that a range of different sort of stock responses like this might fit to. So this could be something that you're able to replicate on the day of your examination. Okay, check out the other videos on my channel. I'll continue to add content and feel free to ask for something you'd like to see me cover in the content sec comment section rather. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell and share and keep revising.